um, it was a, there were some statistics on, it was the company size, um, 1 billion in annual revenue and larger. Mm -hmm. Um, they're the least likely to move to an SD WAN solution and continue to invest in the MPLS circuits that they have. Certainly. And, and, and in fact, probably increase their investment. Mm -hmm. Is that because they're less agile than the smaller enterprises in moving their legacy applications out of their own data centers and into the, the cloud SaaS model? Or is there another reason why they would want to continue to hold on to their MPLS circuits and, and increase the investment in something like that instead of going to like a SD win? Well, I think um, a lot of large enterprises, especially over the billion dollar range, they have a significant amount of resources and they're still do it yourselfers in terms of mindset. Um, so as a result, they still have a lot of their own server architecture that they operate out of their own data centers. They're not even using uh, the co-location services of like an Equinix or other providers like CloudTrack or others. Um, some, in some cases, they own and operate that building and they have their own stuff in it. Um, and they're, you know, the, you know, the, the sort of derogative term is server huggers, <laughs> they're still sure. hugging their, their servers. They still have, uh, uh, you know, Cisco and other PBX architectures in those data centers as well. And because they are working to ride out those investments, and in some cases they want to, um, uh, just continue the licensing, uh, arrangements that they have, it's sometimes simpler just to stay put just in the same manner that a lot of customers hung on to their PBX and server architecture for so long. Um, but in moving toward a more cloud uh, centric approach, um, you're able to free up a lot of that hassle factor um, and retask a lot of those enterprise IT people to do things that are more um, top line oriented strategic within, and more strategic within yeah. the enterprise. That's right. So the, the first thing to go in some cases, and we're talking about really large um, enterprises that have their own network operation centers and security operation centers, and they've made all the investments in staff, et cetera, um, that's becoming more and more difficult to maintain. Number one, um, you know, uh, again, the, the technology stack itself is so complex that you need all these different vendors. You have to manage all that chaos. That chaos is becoming more and more unwieldy. Um, it's like trying to hold a squiggly wet fish, <laughs> um, but also maintaining that security staff. You know, those, these people command ridiculous salaries and they move around a lot. Um, I think there's 3 million or something open InfoSec jobs now in North America, which is crazy or globally rather. Um, so the do it yourself m mentality of a lot of these large enterprises it, is beginning to fade in favor of, we should probably use managed services for this. Um, and then that's, that approach is becoming more widespread. Um, so in the mid market, this is more obvious, you know, when there's two IT people that have to manage hundreds of locations, having managed services to help you is the only path. But for large enterprises over a billion, there's a couple other interesting stats for that crowd. Um, I think there's a survey that um, uh, a consulting entity did that uh, stated that uh, the IT people within enterprises that are over a billion uh, were, um, I think like 83% of them or some ridiculous number were afraid that they would lose their jobs if there was a security breach. But at the same time, only 28% of them uh, felt like they were unprepared for an attack. So across, you know, small, mid and large enterprises, um, they were the least, uh, they felt that they were the least underprepared, but also they felt uh, the most at risk if there were a breach, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely a, a perception gap. And um, in the end, unless, you know, you're a security provider, you know, if you're McAfee, then maybe you should maintain your own security operations center and staff related to it. Um, but if you're not, um, you know, you really should just focus on your core business and have your uh, enterprise folks, uh, you know, give them a set of tools that's easier to wield and elevates agility within the enterprise without having to make all these additional investments. So we've seen this curve as well with UCAS, where UCAS is now, and contact centers of service are now being adopted as cloud-based services in larger and larger and larger enterprises. But those folks that are over a billion in, um, uh, in size, they tend to still have their own servers. They still have their own PBXs. Uh, they tend to still have exchange servers, things like that. They haven't gotten to Office 365 yet, some of them. Um, but that's all starting to change. And mm -hmm. I would think over the next five to seven years, this is going to be a pretty sweeping uh, set of changes that will affect even the largest 